Let's now take a look at an overview of the .NET annotations that are available and a sample of using them in a C Sharp console application. The objectives for this lesson are to find out what is a data annotation, learn about the error message property, localize the error message property, and a sample of using data annotations. What is a data annotation? Well, it's simply an attribute that you use to decorate a property, such as required, email address, string length, and many others. All data annotations inherit from the validation attribute class, and what they do is they check the property value and they return an error message if invalid data is contained within that property value. So, for example, if you have a string and it's not filled in, and you have it decorated with a required attribute, it would give you a message that that property value must be filled in. If you have a string length over a string property, that string may be too short or too long, and it will again give you an error message that tells the user, hey, you didn't fill in something correctly. Now, in ASP.NET MVC applications, properties are validated automatically. When you post something to an endpoint, that data will be checked. However, in other .NET applications, WPF, Windows Forms, anything like that, minimal web API, you need to call the code to perform those same validations. And that's what we're going to learn how to do in this course. Now, as I mentioned, there's an error message property. And this error message property gets or sets the error message. There is a default message for each data annotation, but we're allowed to override that error message. Now, within that error message property, there are placeholders that we can add, such as in the curly braces 0, 1, or 2. So, for example, on a range attribute, we might put the error message as in curly braces 0 must be between 1 and 2. So, the way this works is 0 is normally the property name. Number 1 is the first parameter. So, in this case, that would be that 0.01. And 2 would be the second parameter, or in this case, that 9,999. If you're dealing with multilingual applications, you may localize the error message property. So error messages can be placed into resources. And then there's three additional properties of the validation attribute class that you will use. There's an error message string, which gets or sets the localized error message an error message resource name, so that gets or sets the message resource name, and of course the error message resource type, which is the class type of where that error resource is located. In this course, I'm going to be using a console application, because if you can do this data annotation in a console application, you can do it anywhere. So let's take a look at our data annotation sample. Now, I don't expect you to understand everything going on here, but this is what we're going to learn about. So I've got a product that I'm assigning some data to. And you see the product number is not filled in. The name is not filled in. The color is not filled in. The standard cost is zero. The list price is zero. And then line 18, I say messages equals validation helper dot validate. And I pass in that product object. And then what it's going to do is give me back any messages that failed. The messages come back as a list of validation result objects. Validation result is a built-in .NET class, and we're going to learn about that coming up real soon. But I wanted to show you, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And here you can now see the messages. Product name must be filled in. Product color must have three characters or more. Cost must be between 0.01 cent and 9,999. So you can see all of these validations have failed. So how did this one line of code here on line 18 give us all that data back? I didn't write any of that code myself. What I did is on the product class, I decorated each property with some data annotations. So if we look at lines 8 through 11, you can see display name equals product name required. Error message equals 0 must be filled in. String length 50 comma. Minimum length equals 4. Error message. 0 can only have between 2 and 1, those placeholders, characters. And I did this for each of these properties. So they all have these data annotations. And it's all of these things that gave us those error messages just by doing this validation helper dot validate. And we're going to learn how to build this validation helper class. 
This is what it looks like at its bare minimum. And so there's not a lot of code here, but this is all standard .NET stuff. I just created this static class called validation helper and this one static method called validate to allow us to validate any object we want that has been decorated with data annotations. In this lesson, we saw that data annotations inherit from the validation attribute class. The error message property reports the validation error to the user. You can use placeholders within the error message property. And we saw the completed application using data annotations. Coming up next, validating data annotations programmatically in C-sharp.